Hi there, this is Dr. John Whitcomb talking about lectin lessons number one. What are they? Have you ever heard of someone who says they're allergic to wheat and they go get tested for gluten sensitivity and they don't have celiac disease and yet they'll tell you ardently that they are very sensitive to wheat and you sort of poo-poo it? Well, they aren't allergic and celiac disease, but they probably have lectin sensitivity. Ever heard of lectins? Well, here's the lesson. First of all, lectins are what plants make to keep insects and humans from eating them. One example might be on fruit, like an apple. In May and June, a green apple will make you sick if you eat it. It's loaded with lectins. When it turns red, the plant is ready to let you eat it. The lectins fade away, and so that poison is gone. And over millennia, plants and animals and insects living together have gotten used to each other to some degree. Now, that means the bugs in their guts and their whole organism is used to these poisons or uh, biological tricksters. And oftentimes the plants have learned to make lectins. They've evolved to make lectins that are quite close to animals' proteins that for signaling like hormones. Not quite, just enough to confuse the animal and make it sick. That's the whole point. But there are tiny doses. So what we're introducing now is the concept of not just food as macronutrients and not just food as hormones, but food as immunology. And this is where we're introducing your immunology. Lectins. Now, wheat, this is what's happened with, with humans. We evolved in Africa used to eating African foods. And about 150,000 years ago, we started coming out of Africa. There's evidence of us cooking. There's caves in Israel that show humans. But it was only 10,000 years ago we discovered how to grow wheat and legumes in the Fertile Crescent. And that allowed us to have civilization and cities and armies and kings and kill each other. But it exposed us to new plants that had lectins in them that we'd never seen before. Well, it was only 70 years ago that Borlaug in Mexico took wheat and added the chromosomes of two grasses. You know, we don't eat grasses. Two grasses for a total, taking wheat from 14 to 42 chromosomes and adding all those extra lectins from the grasses into wheat. But another revolution happened about 10,000 years ago, and that is that the predecessor, the great-great-grandmother of black cows, Holstein cows, had a mutation in their milk, making casein into A1, what we call A1 milk, where the substitution of making a seven amino acid fragment in milk that acts like a lectin and attaches to your immune system. And then 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue, and comes back from the new world with all sorts of new foods that humans have never seen before. All these foods are new to the human gut, so the human biome isn't used to them. And to some degree, some humans probably can adapt to them okay, but there certainly are people who can't. Now, cooking breaks up lots of lectins, and so far so good, but in the last hundred years, we humans have invented a lot of things that allow lectins to get into us even more. And those things are foods that give us leaky gut. And those things are things like ibuprofen and non-steroidals and PPI, anti-acid drugs and prednisone and antibiotics. With the advent of leaky gut, lectins have just exploded in their toxicity. So we're now going to explore over the next 10 weeks what those problems might be. But what will work for me? Well, I'm really eager to learn this out, and you should too. Please listen for the next couple of weeks. We're going to explore what lectins do to you. Meanwhile, this is Dr. Whitcomb wishing you well on lectin lesson number one. How did they come about?